everyone is talking about how energy rates are going up drastically. And when you live in Southern California with nearly 300 days of sunshine a year and a slogan that is where the sun always shines, you would think that everybody should have solar, right? Or should they? I mean, I love to think about not having an electric bill especially in the summertime. And does solar have an impact on your house when you're selling it? To start, we have to look at the overall cost of solar to put on your house. Now, this really comes down to the size of your house. And for this example, we're just gonna look at a 2,000 square foot house, which is a little bit larger than the average sized house here in the greater Los Angeles area. And as you can see in this article from fixer.com, it is gonna range in price anywhere from 15,000 to $40,000. Huge spread, I know, I'll explain. Now, before we get into that, the next decision that you'll have to make is whether you want to buy the solar system or lease the solar panels. Many solar companies you speak to will try to lease you the solar panels, which means that you rent them from the solar installer for a 20 year period and make monthly payments over the term. While leasing your solar panels will give you a much lower initial monthly payment than what your monthly power bill is, there is a yearly escalator of 3% on your monthly bill, which compounds every year, meaning that your monthly lease payment will have nearly doubled by year 25. Now. The other thing that you need to know about leasing a solar system with a payment is that a lot of the solar companies will actually put a lien on your house until the end of your term. And most lease companies aren't gonna tell you this. On that note, I'd really like to know if that happened to you or if you know anybody that this has happened to. So how has your experience been? Post it in the comments below, I'm really curious. Okay, so now back to the huge price range. What it really comes down to is how many panels you put on the house. Well, you might just be thinking to yourself, well, that's easy, I just won't put as many panels on the house and then it will be less expensive. But it just doesn't work like that. The goal with solar is to produce as much electricity over a year's period with your panels to replace what you were previously buying from the utility company. So if you're buying 10,000 kilowatt hours a year from SCE, you would want enough panels to produce 10,000 kilowatt hours in a year period so that you do not have to pay another power bill again. But there's an issue with this. Solar panels only produce power during the daytime. So how are the solar panels gonna produce power to cover the electric bill at nighttime when the sun has gone down? And this is a really good question. And back in the day when solar panels were being installed on houses for the first time, utility companies provided a solution. If a house has solar panels on the roof and during the day the solar panels are producing more power than what the house is using, that excess energy can simply be pushed back onto the power grid and then distributed to other houses in the area. And since the utility companies are not the ones who generate the electricity, they would give credit to the homeowners for all the excess power that they produced and that credit could be used to pay off their nighttime electrical usage. So say as an easy example, a household uses 50 kilowatt hours throughout the day, 30 coming from the daytime and 20 coming from the nighttime. Their solar panels throughout the afternoon made 60 kilowatt hours, 30 of which were used right away by the house during the daytime and the other 30 being sent back to the grid for credits to pay off their nighttime bill. And this system worked for a very long time, just until last year when California public utility companies said this could no longer happen. The thing is, California energy costs are higher than anywhere in the country. And for that reason, no state can come even close to California and how many homes have solar panels? More than 1.8 million do. And so the problem became so many people got solar panels that it was actually causing the public utility companies like SCE, PG&E, and SDG&E to have to upgrade their local grid infrastructure to account for the solar. Because when you've got 80% of the homes in a given neighborhood pulling and pushing back solar onto the grid, that is gonna require new power lines, transformers, and much more. And don't think that these utility companies were just gonna take a loss in efforts of supporting clean energy. What this led to was utility companies having to increase the power rates for all homeowners, regardless of whether or not they had solar, which many thought was unfair. And so in the spring of 2023, utility companies said, look, you can continue to send power back to the grid, but instead of giving you this credit one for one, which you can use to pay off your nightly bill, now we're only gonna give you 20 cents on the dollar. And so the idea of switching over to a cheaper and cleaner energy source just doesn't make as much sense. And that is what homeowners thought as well. Since the spring of 2023, demand in California for solar has gone down nearly 80%, causing companies to pack up and move elsewhere, and homeowners with high utility bills left without a solution. And 
This brings us to our next issue. What happens to all of the people who got solar, were offered a handful of warranties to use over 25 years, and then their utility company goes out of business because of this move? The unfortunate fact of the matter is that when your solar installer goes out of business, you no longer have good standing warranties at your disposal. So when year 15 comes around and you have potentially an inverter that goes out, it would now be up to you to pay for a technician to come out to the house and solve the issue. And this is not what we signed up for. But here is this, while policies come and go over the years, so does new technology. And that is exactly what has happened in 2024, which has brought back solar in California after a dark year. Solar manufacturing companies saw the trend of less utility companies across the country offering net metering to homeowners. And what they decided to do was create low cost battery storage systems so that instead of in the afternoon homeowners sending their energy back to the power grid, they would now simply send the excess energy back to a battery and then at nighttime when the solar stops producing the battery would be responsible for powering the house and while for many years people thought this would be impossible because of the cost of wall mounted batteries the way in which companies make them has innovated and the costs have come down by nearly 85 percent in the past decade now in 2024 the reality of solar in california has become that nighttime battery systems will be included in most all installations and fortunately, with the cost plummeting over the past few years, most homeowners can expect to see a buyback period of 6 to 12 years if they choose to go solar in the state. But this does not mean that everything is all of a sudden perfect with solar in California. There are still a few problems that homeowners need to watch out for. Let's go back to what we were talking about earlier about how we can buy solar in two ways, either leasing or owning. Leasing is going to be our cheapest option for the upfront monthly payments, but there are a couple of issues. First, the companies will put a 3% annual escalator on our monthly bill, which means that our bill will have nearly doubled by the end of the term. And two, there is really no way to get out of the lease once you signed up. There will be large prepayment penalties, which make doing that not worth it. And if you look to move, you will likely have to sell your house with the stipulation that the new homeowners take on your bill. And this is going to cause a couple of issues. For one, very few homeowners are going to want to incur the latter half of a rising lease payment. And two, if you have a leased solar system on your home with monthly payments and you have a buyer that is getting a loan to buy your home, they not only have to qualify for the loan payment of the home, but they also have to qualify for the solar payment as well. And sometimes they simply cannot get approved for both, and the additional debt that the solar system adds to the loan just kicks them out of being able to qualify for a mortgage. And so buying the solar panels becomes your other option. If you have the means and you can purchase the system cash, that is a great option. And you should expect to have a buyback period of six to nine years, even with the battery. Otherwise, you can look into financing. Prime rates right now sit between eight and 9%, and that is about what you should expect to pay in your APR for your solar payment. But since solar companies are all about sales and showing the lowest monthly payment, one of the biggest scams in the industry that you must watch out for is that sometimes these companies are artificially buying down the rates to four or five percent and then adding that fee, that cost of the loan buy down into the loan without telling you. This is what is referred to as a dealer fee and is likely what you will pay if you move forward with a loan under 8% at the time of this recording. This becomes a major issue because if you want to pay down your solar system early, now you would have to pay down additional principal, which you shouldn't have had to pay in the first place. So maybe you choose to go with the higher interest rate, same as cash price loan. Great, just make sure that you can try to pay it down early so that you avoid having to pay a large amount of money towards interest over the long term. Now, there's still one problem that we still have yet to resolve. How do we pick a solar installer that we can trust will be around for 20 to 25 years to offer warranties on the systems. The biggest thing which we'll want to look for will be large established companies who have been in business for 10 plus years and have a nationwide footprint. Guys, I love supporting mom and pop businesses just like everybody else, but the reality is that the biggest thing we need out of our installer is for them to be around for the foreseeable future so that in the event that we need to exercise a warranty claim, we can be better assured that they'll be around. If you live in California and you're looking for one of these reliable installers that can offer the 
newer low-cost battery systems, feel free to reach out to us here at SolarPros by booking a call in the link in the description, and we would be happy to provide you with a free quote from one of our local installation partners. But like I said earlier, if you already have solar and maybe have had a similar experience as to something that I mentioned in this video, comment down below your story. I'm super curious to hear what has happened and I'll try to respond to all comments, whether you need help with something or something else. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.